What's up folks, Crosshairs G, and as promised, here are my thoughts on Gan Yu. I gotta do a huge disclaimer for this one though. As you may have heard me mention a couple of times before, I am not a bow specialist by a long shot. I basically use Diona for shields and heals, Fischl for Oz, and Ember for puzzles. That's the entire extent of my experience with bow units. On the same note, amplification reaction comps aren't my forte either. I do know how they work and know how the damage is calculated of course, but I wouldn't necessarily know which characters are best suited for specific reaction comps. Thus, there will be things that I don't consider or builds that I completely overlook in this process. Nonetheless, I'll try to keep this as informative and objective as I can, focusing on giving you the baseline figures so you have a better idea of what we're working with and are able to draw better conclusions about Ganyu. And of course, we have the usual pre-launch disclaimer. We have seen enough units receive both buffs and nerfs on launch day, so take everything with a grain of salt, folks. Nothing is confirmed till the units go live. Alright, so Ganyi is an upcoming 5-star cryo bow unit coming in the Nyx banner. Going over her kit, we see that she has very low base HP and defense, just a tiny bit more than the 4-star Amber. To balance this out though, she has a very high base attack of 335 at level 90, which rivals Diluc. Her ascension bonus also looks to be crit damage, and do note that we need to subtract the base value of 50% from this total for 38.4% crit damage at maximum ascension. Her normal attack is a 6 shot chain and her shot modifiers seem to be very low compared to other 5 star bow units. Her charge attack on the other hand is unique in that it has two stages of charge. Stage 1 looks to be the typical charge shot that we see on any bow unit, holding the button to charge, deal elemental damage. Stage 2 however fires a frost flake arrow that explodes after hitting the target, dealing AoE cryo damage. The modifier of the initial hit is a tiny bit higher than her regular charge shot, but the bloom damage certainly looks interesting because these multipliers are closer to what we would normally see on E skills or even some bursts. Having the ability to deal AoE damage on what is essentially a charged shot is also unique to Gan Yu. Yes, I know Child has some AoE capabilities as well, but to my knowledge the mechanic for Riptide is completely different. Anyway, looking at her E skill, the Trail of Chilin, and we basically have the cryo version of Amber's Baron Bunny, except you can't target place it. For those who aren't familiar with Amber's Bunny, you basically cast it on the field and it taunts surrounding targets, exploding when it is destroyed or when the duration ends. Another difference is that Gan Yu's E skill deals two instances of damage, once on cast before Gan Yu jumps backwards and once again on the bloom. Only one modifier is listed, so I'm assuming it simply does the same damage both on initial cast and on the bloom. Now this looks to be both an evasive skill as well as a setup for a possible charge shot spam. It has a duration of 6 seconds and a cooldown of 10 seconds. Moving on to her burst, and again we see some similarities to Amber's burst. Celestial Shower summons shards of ice that continuously rains down within a specific area, dealing constant cryo damage. The key differences here are that Ganyu's burst has a much larger area of effect than Amber's burst, and rather than dealing a specified amount of damage to the entire area, it appears to deal random hits of damage within the area over a 15 second duration. It's hard to tell from the official clip how fast the shards spawn or whether they are indeed falling at random, so we'll have to wait for the launch to know for sure. It also seems like the individual shards deal AoE damage in a small area. We can see here what looks like both enemies taking damage from a single shard. It has an energy cost of 60, cooldown of 20 seconds and lasts for 15 seconds. Going over her talents and the first one refunds 15% of the ores used to craft bowls. The second talent increases the crit rate of Floss Flake arrows and their bloom by 20% for 5 seconds after firing a Frost Flake arrow. Nice, so basically from the second shot onwards we gain 20% crit rate. The last talent grants 20% cryo damage to active party members within the AoE of her burst. 
onto her constellations and C1 causes damage dealt by her Frost Flake arrow or its bloom to decrease the cryo resistance of enemies by 15% for 6 seconds. It also regenerates 2 energy for Ganyu per hit of the Frost Flake arrow or its bloom. This can only occur once per Frost Flake shot. C2 gives her E skill an additional charge. C4 increases the damage taken by enemies within Kanyu's burst area of effect. This damage bonus starts at 5% and increases by 5% every 3 seconds up to a maximum of 25%. The damage bonus stays on targets for 3 seconds after they leave the area of effect. And lastly, her C6 causes her E skill to remove the charge time of the next Frost Flake arrow shot within 30 seconds. Okay, that's her kit, and full disclosure, when I first heard whispers of Ganyu's kit, I basically wrote her off as a 5-star cryo version of Ember. Not that I think Ember is a bad unit, but I just find bow units in general a little clunky to use. After going through her kit in detail though, I must say that I definitely see lots of potential here. It looks like Mihoyo clearly intends for Frostflake Arrow to be her primary DPS ability and designed her entire kit around it. Because of how her kit reads, it looks to me, at first glance at least, that Ganyu might be best played at relatively close quarters despite being a bow unit. Her burst's area of effect is large and her third talent and C4 provide additional bonuses while standing within her burst. My thought process here is that you'd want to be fighting within her burst at all times to gain these bonuses and the best way I can think to do this would be to run some sort of freeze comp to keep enemies locked down within the area, spamming a bunch of frost flakes at them. Anyway, taking a look at potential artifact builds, the new cryo set is probably high up on the list for many players and this isn't surprising. Adding 40% crit rate to frozen targets, plus her second talent adding a further 20% after the first frost flake, essentially gives Ganyu 65% base crit rate with this set, or 80% with cryo resonance. This leaves the door wide open to focus almost entirely on stacking raw DPS stats like crit damage or percent attack, much like many are doing with Kea right now. However, the strength of the cryo set, in my opinion, goes beyond this damage potential. The real benefit here lies with the fact that it almost completely negates the need for crit rate and indirectly reduces artifact RNG because you basically have one less stat to worry about. This effectively widens the array of usable artifacts, making it somewhat easier to build for with suboptimal gear. Of course, as mentioned earlier, the DPS benefit would then come from the fact that you can funnel almost all your stat weight into stacking crit damage, percent attack or even EM if that's how you want to roll, which will of course translate to more damage. That being said, depending on your team setup, the cryo set isn't the only viable contender for Ganyu. Having the 20% crit rate from her second talent and the 38.4% crit damage from her ascension provides a very good base to build upon. And assuming bonuses to charge attacks affect both the Frost Flake Arrow and its Bloom, sets like the Wandering Troop and Bolite come into play as well. We now have plenty of sources for shield generation, so keeping the Bolite bonus up on a non geo unit isn't as impractical as it used to be. We'll get to the calculations in a bit. Let's talk about weapons first. Now, much like what we see with Kea and the Black Cliff Longsword right now, there is a lot of hype around the Black Cliff Warbow for Ganyu. However, while the Black Cliff is indeed good on Ganyu, excluding the five star bows, there could be a couple of viable alternatives as well. Let's head over to the spreadsheet, and as always, I'll summarize it shortly. So the weapons I'm comparing here are the Black Cliff Warbow with both one and three buff stacks, the Viridescent Hunt Battle Pass Bow, the Prototype Crescent Craftable 4-star, and the 3-star Slingshot. Everything is R1 except the Slingshot, which is understandably R5. As always, I used level 6 skill modifiers, and here's the level 90 mob mitigation. We'll look at the Cryo set first, and because I don't have a well-optimized Cryo set yet, I used the stats on my Noel's artifacts and swapped the percent defense stats for percent attack. 
I chose Noelle's gear as the baseline because she has the most well-optimized gear out of all my characters, and I wanted to investigate Gan Yu's high-end potential for each weapon. I also considered the full 40% crit bonus from the set, which means running a freeze comp is assumed for these calculations. Additionally, since the cryo set puts me well above 100% crit rate, to make things more applicable and realistic, I normalized the crit rate to 100% and reallocated the excess crit rate evenly between attack and crit damage, proportional to their respective stat weights. For those who don't know what this means, basically I mathematically simulated how much more attack or crit damage I could realistically gain if I gave up the excess crit rate. Quick note on this though, even with 0% crit rate on all artifacts, it is not possible to build for exactly 100% crit with the Veridescent Hunt, the Slingshot and the Skyward Harp. Their inherent crit rate bonuses still bring the total to over 100%. I accounted for this as well and only reallocated as much stats as the artifacts would realistically allow. And lastly, as with all my calculations, depending on your personal stats and team setup, your mileage may differ. Okay, looking at the damage figures, using the single stack Black Cliff as the control, we see that the max stack Black Cliff deals 8.6% more damage. The Viridescent Hunt deals 8.7% less damage, the Prototype Crescent deals 4.9% more damage and the Slingshot also deals 3% more damage. Crit damage here is equal to the average damage because we have 100% crit rate. Now perhaps these results were surprising to some, but I wasn't particularly surprised when I did the calculations. Those who watched my Noel weapon video way back, and especially my recent Black Cliff video, would know that I never really bought into the Black Cliff hype. They are indeed very good weapons, but completely let down by an awful bonus. And as these numbers show, when applicable, a good or bad weapon bonus can account for a lot. Now something should also be said about the Viridescent Hunt as well, because despite dealing less damage than all other options, I did not factor in its bonus into the calculations. Its bonus not only deals additional damage, but also apparently groups enemies up which I can only speculate might be very useful for a unit like Gan Yu. Maybe a bow expert can weigh in on this in the comment section. Now of course, like all of my calculations, I had to make a few assumptions here. First, I think one stack for the Black Cliff is a fair representation of the weapon because maintaining three stacks is a little unrealistic. You are free to disagree with me of course, in which case just go with the three stack damage values and you'll pretty much have the best in slot 4 star weapon for Gan Yu. That's why I included it in calculation. Next, I assumed a 100% uptime for the Prototype Crescent's buff, which may not always be possible because not all enemies have weak points. I just figured that if we are spamming Frostflake arrows anyway, we'd want to go for weak spot hits whenever possible. I also assumed a full uptime on the Slingshot's bonus because in my tests, the effective range of the bonus looks to be at least equal to or larger than the radius of Ganyu's burst. And since we want to be fighting within the area of her burst to gain the extra 20% cryo damage, I think it's reasonable to assume that the Slingshot bonus would always be active if played in this manner. All that being said, I do concede that of the many calculation videos I've done so far, I had to make more assumptions in this one than I normally do. So understand that the goal here is to simply approximate weapon performance. This is definitely not intended to be some sort of Gan Yu weapon tier list. I'm literally the worst person to get your bow tier list from. Okay, before we look at the Wandering Troop set, I did the calculations for the Amos Bow and the Skyward Harp as well, just for reference. Here they are. I assumed the max stacks on the Amos Bow and ignored the bonus AoE damage on the Skyward Harp because it just takes too much math to assign a DPS value to the Harp's bonus. So make of that what you will. And I know some of you will ask for this, so here are the R5 numbers for everything. Alright, and here we have the numbers for the Wandering Troop set. These are of course just the baseline numbers, I didn't do any reaction calculations for this and I'm assuming you'd want to run some sort of amplification team here if you're using this set. And here are the R5 values. 
So if you're curious about the Bolide set, it works out to about 2-3% to more baseline damage, assuming you can keep the shield up at all times. Alright, that's all the math I did for Kanyu. Let's go over my thoughts and how I would hypothetically build her. As mentioned earlier, Kanyu's kit surprised me in a good way. If nothing changes at launch, she will be capable of some serious damage output with Frostflake Arrow, even without reactions, and her kit looks like it's designed to enable this damage. For constellations, I think her C1 is a really good constellation because I can see the potential for a rotation that centers around just using her burst and spamming Frostflake Arrows. If C1 can help bring her burst back up on cooldown, this leaves only a 5 second downtime between burst rotations, just enough to swap around your team and set up for the next rotation. Her C2 on its own looks like more of a nice to have than anything, and I think it brings most of its value only with C6. C4 provides a nice damage debuff to enemies, and because this is a debuff rather than a damage bonus on the active character, this means it has support value as well. And lastly, C6 looks like it'll work well in tandem with C2, and would function as an opener to gain the 20% crit rate instantly. It also allows for a couple of additional frost flakes per burst rotation, or might even be workable in some sort of quick swap team. As for how I would personally run her, well, my non bow using brain is leaning towards running her in a perma freeze comp of sorts, ignoring reaction damage completely and just focusing on keeping targets pinned within her burst area and going ham with frost flakes. I'd go with Diona as the second cryo for shield, heals and team resonance, and I'm kinda undecided about the hydro. Maybe Sing Chu, but then I'd have to alternate between normals and frost flakes just to keep the freeze up. I don't know folks, it's honestly hard to speculate further without testing the comp live. Anyway, for the last slot, I'm looking at either Zhong Li for his beefy shield and more hard CC to keep targets absolutely locked down, or an Anemo unit with the Veridescent set for mob grouping and cryo shred. Now maybe this sounds completely silly and impractical to the bow and reaction specialists out there, but that's just what I'd personally test first if I were to pull for her. Now I'm not gonna lie folks. Making this video has sent my curiosity through the roof regarding Kan Yu, especially knowing that she'd potentially work well with only C1 or even C0. It's a really tough call because if there were to be, you know, hypothetically a certain pole arm on one of the 1.3 banners, or a repeat of the Tsong Li banner, or god forbid, both together, that could spell big trouble for my budget especially if I'm looking to pull for any of the 1.3 5 star units as well. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's it for my Kanyu pre-launch thoughts. Sorry if I seem to be stumbling around a bit. I really don't know bow units all that well. But let me know if this was still helpful and whether you'd like me to continue making pre-launch thoughts videos on future characters that I don't plan to pull for. As always, thumbs up if you liked it, down if you didn't, Crush that subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care folks.